In today's video, we are going to look at setting up a small farm. This farm you are looking at is about 100 pieces of fingerlings in capacity. We are going to use the square tank, which is a plastic tank. These are the tanks that sometimes we use in our homes as reservoirs. They normally have a water holding capacity of 1000 liters. So for those of you who do not have this tank and you need to purchase, we are looking at getting two of them. One is going to serve as your fish pond and the second one is going to serve as a quarantine tank and also it is going to serve as a tank that you would store water in there. Also, it is going to serve as a tank that you'll be using when there is a need for you to sort out your bigger fishes from your smaller fishes. So how much is that tank? Ideally, I know it's around 500 to 600 Ghana cities, which is about $96. So you secure that tank. For some of you in your homes, you have water holes in your house. So when I started my fish farm, what I was doing was, I just connect the water hose to one, one aspect of my poly tank, and then the water flows through into my fish pond. But if you do not have anything of that sort, all you just need to do is get a pipe, and then we do the plumbing works into your pond. So that will serve as an inlet for water to enter the fish pond. The total water holding capacity of that pond is a thousand liters. And so the maximum number of fishes we want to put in this setup from fingerling stage to maturity are just 100. I have, I have had instances where people stock with more, I've even tried before. But then for new farmers, I recommend this particular method. So let's just say you've been able to secure your tank. What is the next thing we want to talk about? The next thing you want to talk about is your fingerlings. You ask yourself, how many? I already said 100. How much is it? Normally, it ranges from one city to two cities. But most of the time, I look at one city 50 pesos fishes. Now, one city 50 pesos is about 24 cents. And so we are looking at 100 of them and so 150 Ghana cities for 100 fingerlings and then you get them at your end. Mind you, before you bring the fishes into your setup, that is after you have your tank in there and then you've sorted out your outlet, you need to sterilize the tank and then wash in. So it's, you sterilize with salt, you make a salt solution and then with a foam or, some, uh, or a, a cloth, you need to rub through and then you use fresh water to wash the water totally. These fishes are freshwater fish, so you need to be able to make sure that you don't contaminate the water with the salt, otherwise it will kill them. In my farm, I use salt to kill these fishes, so be careful. So before you get your fingerlings in your setup, what you need to do is you need to fill the water, not to the brim, to the quantity needed. Normally I look around 500 liters of water and then sometimes around 400, that threshold. So you fill in that water for like a day or two before the fingerlings come in there. So before you go and pick up the fingerlings, this water is in your setup. Now, I use tap water in my farm and probably with the same setup, you would like to use tap water. What you just need to understand is the water contains alum and chlorine, which is harmful to your fish. So what I do is I just store the water for some time on the sun for a number of days, three, four days, and it's okay for them. And I don't have any issue. I've not had challenges, anything whatsoever. So now you go to pick up your fingerlings from the farm. When you get them from the farm, most of the farmers will instruct you as to what to know and what to do, and then you bring them to your farm. Ideally, the day you pick up your fingerlings, you don't feed them for the next 24 hours. This is a basic fish practice, okay? And the next thing you want to look out for is your water situation. 
Normally in my farm, I budget for the water I use. So in a small setup like that, you, what you just need to do is call your water company and then ask them for a thousand liter of water, liters of water, how much am I supposed to pay? This whole farming thing is going to run for the next six months. So if they tell you how much they charge you for a thousand liter, since your setup is not a recirculatory system, that is, there are, there are no filters for the water to run through the system and then get back into the pond, it means that you'll be flushing out the water in the setup every two days. I've had farmers who tell me they do three days and they do four days and they do a week. But you see, it exposes your fishes to bacteria buildup and ammonia spike. Later on in this channel, we'll talk about what spikes up your ammonia. And so now you know these things. So the calculation we use for our water is simple. Per our calculation, we know that we have 180 days. So we are changing water every two days. That would be you'll be changing water 90 times to the entire cycle. So if they tell you they are charging you five Ghana cities per thousand liter, what you just need to understand is this. Five cities times the 90 days. You get the total and you divide by two. And it's going to help you to know how much you are going to consume with water. With 100 finger length, the calculations I use, I use a conversion ratio of one kg of feed is to produce or is to provide me with one kg of weight in fish. So for 100 finger lengths, what you need to understand is this. You need a total of 100 kg of feed. So in order to get how many bags of feed you need, there are some feeds that have 15 kg, some have 20 kg per sack or per bag. So then you divide 100 by the kind of bag you are purchasing to tell you the number of bags you need to get. Now, I want you to understand that we have different, different sizes of the fish feed. And so there's a bit of a small calculation that goes in there to know what quantity of 2 mm or 3 mm or 4.5 or 6 or 8 mm should I buy. Lastly, I make people understand that you need to also calculate your cost of transportation. So if you are picking the finger lanes from point A and you are delivering them to your house and then feed from another point, what I tell people is this. Normally on the day of purchase of finger lanes, make sure you have your feed as well. So that when you go to a spot, you're able to assess everything and then you take them to your homes. This is also going to help you a lot. So in a system like this, at the end of the day, that is at the end of the six months, normally we calculate mortalities around 10%. But a new farmer look at a figure around 20% of your fishes dying as a result of you learning what you are getting yourself into. What I did was I started with 100, I grew to 500, now I'm in the thousands. You can also do the same and so take advantage of this wonderful information. So in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, ideally you do not spend more than 2,000 Ghana cities for the entire cycle. What you need to know is this, you get the most necessary things in place. That is the tanks, the plumbing works, the fingerlings, their water, and then the feed you buy them as and when. So what we realized is this. Most of the farms or the farmers, we've helped them to set up. Even with this same kind of system, we realize that some of them do have fishes around 1.5 to 1.6 kg in size. And the most important thing for you to understand is this. If it is something you want to use in your house, it's so easy. You can just visit that farm and then get something nice, juicy, and then eat them. But for some of you who like to ask yourself, what am I going to do with these fishes? That is where the marketing comes in. And the marketing would provide you information 
on the various marketing avenues and strategies you can use to be able to sell or deal with that fish. So please don't worry, just get in touch. We have a community of farmers who are also starters like you and then some of them now are in their second cycle. That is, they've been able to produce with their system for the first time and some of them are trying to produce for the second time. Some are also trying to expand and we have a community where we share ideas, where we interact and stuff like that. We don't leave anybody hanging. So please try as much as possible to get in touch with us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and put on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on our episodes. See you next time. Bye.